Okay, cool. So we're ready to go. We're going to talk about <clears throat> the three-step formula on why the risk get richer and why the poor keep getting poorer. Stay broke. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to get into that today. Now, number one, so if you're taking notes, uh, if you're watching the recording, you're taking notes, um, number one is the ability to adopt or adapt to a new way of doing things quickly, okay? There, there's a study that said, there's actually a scientific study on why um, rich people continue to get rich, and, and that study's basically come down to their ability to adopt new ways of thinking quicker, okay? It's, it, this, this study, uh, I don't have it in front of me. Um, the book I was reading is called um, Anthropology. It was a while back, but I don't, I don't have the quote in front of me, but these two scientists, I think they were the Embers were their names, and they discovered that the people that actually need uh, technical, technological innovations, the people that need these innovations in their life, they're actually the last to adopt the innovation. So the people that actually need the innovations, the people that are that are in poverty, that are, aren't making the money that they want to make, are the people that actually need these new ways of doing things. However, the people that actually need them are the last ones to adopt them. Okay? Well, I would say one inability. Yeah. So, so number one is is you got to really start asking yourself, how how easily do I adopt new ways of thinking? How how easily do I uh, adapt to things that are that are new that are new? There are new ways of thinking, new ways of doing things. Okay? Um, you know, for me, um, you know, I, I was, I was once one of those guys, sorry about it. Sorry about that. Had a call. Uh, I was once one of those guys that was anti-social media. I was literally anti-social media. So, I was, so, so that doesn't help me in regards to what I'm doing now. Right. I adapted to social media. Now, was I one of the first people to adopt social media? No, but I would say that, you know what? I wish I probably would have adapted to blogging sooner. Right, um, you know, you can always say Ray Higdon was one of the best, one of the, not the first, but what if he was um, slow to adopt or to adopt that new way of thinking that that blogging was a good way to build a business online, right? You know, a lot of us um, have adopted that. A lot of us still have it. A lot of us are like we're, we're we throw it up, we throw up our our anti blog sign, and I, I did I did it for a while too. Um, you have to realize that there are certain kind of people on the planet. Okay, uh, and, and they broke this down. They broke the, the scientists broke this down. What up, Coach Cat? They broke this down, and there's certain people that are just wired for this. There, there are certain people that are wired for to be visionaries, to be um, the, the risk takers, um, to be the optimist, to be the pessimist, uh, to be the cynic, to be so so you have to ask yourself, are you know, are you an optimist? Are you are you cynical? There, there's a time to be cynical, okay. There's, and there's a time to be an optimist too, okay? Um, you know, they, they went on to, to talk about, um, they went on to talk about all the things that there's sometimes that you need to let other people take the risk, okay? There are, there are times where you have to let other people take the risk. They also said, you know, there's times where you have to take that risk. Um, a lot of times when you hear like stories when it comes to rags to riches people, um, they have ado they adopted a new way of thinking when no one else would. Okay, so you've got to start thinking about the ways that you can adopt new ways of thinking before someone else or before the masses do. Because remember, it, it's not necessarily about, you know, oh, the rich get richer or the poor get poor. The rich are just, and, and it's not, it has to do nothing with money. You know, they, they did this study and it has to do absolutely nothing with money. Okay, I hope you're getting this. It has to do nothing with money about they have money so they're, they're able to take the risk. If you hear any rags to riches story, they didn't necessarily have the money. They just adopted the new way of thinking quicker. Okay, so rich people understand that they have to adopt new ways of thinking. Therefore, they actually benefit from them quicker. So if you're in that poor category, if you're not making the money that you want to make, you have to look for ways that you have that you can adopt a new way of thinking or a new way of doing things. Um, you know, one of the one of the we look around now. It's 2017, guys, and we're looking around now. And look at your life. You look at the lights that we have outside. Two, you know, 200 years ago, if you lived in like Canada, Alaska, uh, Sweden, you know, some places in Russia, you couldn't, you you weren't functioning 24 hours a day. We can move 24 hours a day, guys. 24 hours a day. Okay. Now, were you able to do that 200 years ago? No. 
because you couldn't actually interact. You couldn't be stimulated 24 hours a day. It just wasn't possible. So, um, you know, we look at people like Thomas Edison. He was, you know, called crazy for years. He was called a, a jerk for a long time. Um, he adopted a new way of thinking. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. If you want to Google it and figure it out, the guy that um, that figured out how to ship ice um, changed the world forever. Okay, so he adopted a new way of thinking. He he, I mean, he he learned how to ship ice. So now we we have air conditioning. Uh, hospitals have improved. I mean, our, our lives have forever been changed from a guy that was once getting laughed at for his his idea to ship and sell ice. Okay, shift your mindset, shift your income. Of course. Okay, so. Um, again, uh, you know, there's a, there, if you read, if you haven't seen the movie Jobs, uh, Bill Gates will say he wasn't in a play. He was cynical about the Internet. OK, um, Bill, Bill Gates himself said he missed the Internet and that allowed Steve Jobs and Apple to propel in, in a lot of different ways. Um, if you haven't seen the movie Jobs, great movie. But how quickly do you adopt to new innovations? Think about some places where you adopted to a new innovation and it helped you out. Um, but also think about the where you can really learn from, guys. Is think about the places where you didn't. Think about the places where you where you were like ah, you know, it could have been network marketing. You could have been one of those people who's like ah, no, I'm, I'm I'm really skeptical about network marketing. I don't like network. It's just it could be one of those pyramid schemes. I don't know, you know. But you continuously, continuously, continuously over and over again, you're seeing people have more success. You're seeing people, they're having success outside of the industry just because they're involved in the industry. So look at places. I'm telling you guys, I mean, you may want to share this with your prospects and have them listen to this. Um, but there's a time and there's a place to be cynical. Okay. There, there is, there is a time and a place to be cynical, but there's also a time and a place to be an optimist. Okay. And there's a time and a place where when your optimism can help you get rich and where your cynicism will keep you poor. All right, so um, ask yourself, what kind of person are you being? Are you being an optimist? Or are you being cynical? Are you being a, are you being a cynicist? Number two, okay, number two, and the, the formula of why the rich get richer and the poor stay poor. Are you ready? You guys ready for number two? I know number one was deep. Okay, ready? Yeah, I had to get a little deep on you for number one. Uh, if you got value, this is the deal. If you got value from, um, if you got value from, from number one, I want you to press the share button uh, because chances are someone else can get some heavy, heavy value from it too. Uh, if you got value from number from number one, I want you to put a number one and press the share button. That way I know you guys got value from it and, uh, and hopefully it, it, it opened your eyes and lightened you a little bit to some things. All right, number two. Number two is you've got to double down, okay? You've got to double down. When you find something that works, you got to double down. I train a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of entrepreneurs, and I'm not calling out anybody that I've trained, okay? Because I've done it too. I if if you've done it, I'm telling you, I've been worse, <laughs> and I'm not trying to win the worst competition. But um, if I've trained you on it, then chances are I've been bad at it, okay? Number two is you got to double down on what works. A lot of times, why the rich get richer and the poor get poor is because the poor will find something that works and they'll never do it again. Now, I'm not calling you, I'm not, when I say poor, I'm talking about the people that if you're not getting the results that you're looking to get, you've got to double down, okay? Uh, Valerie and I just talked about this maybe a couple weeks ago on one of our coaching calls. You know, hey, boom, I got a new customer, right? You, you start to turn that corner. Okay, and I know Valerie's watching. You start to turn that corner. Boom, I got a new customer. Okay, great. What worked? You've got to double down on what worked. Boom, next week, I got another customer. What is working? Double down 10x on what's working. Okay, that's step number two. Find out and be very clear on, what, on what's working. That's why tracking is so important in your business because you've got to visually see not just say, okay, I'm doing this. No, you've got to see it and document it and track what's working. Okay, you've got to double down on what's working. One of my mentors told me a, a great story. Um, and this is what I see a lot of entrepreneurs do. Now, he said when he was about six years old, he opened up his first cherry tomato stand. Okay, and I love this story. He said his mom helped him out, funded him $2.00. And he went outside, he got the material, he got the stuff. He said he'd done his little six-year-old research and said, man, I love cherry tomatoes. Um, 
I know other people are going to love cherry tomatoes. So I'm going to open up my own cherry tomato stand. I'm going to invest a dollar. I'm going to sell this thing for, you know, two bucks on a glass. And I'm going to double my, my revenue. I'm going to double what I, my investment. Okay. So he, he goes out. He doesn't sell any. Okay. He actually said he think he may have sold one to his mom out of pity. But he really, really wanted to sell these cherry tomatoes. He knew he was going to be rich selling cherry tomatoes. Um, at the end of the day, at the end of the week, no sales did not work. Okay. Now, he said that um, someone had the idea and said, hey, look, maybe you should do lemonade. So he had the idea to open up a lemonade stand the next week. Um, so changes out the cherry tomatoes, opens up a lemonade stand. All right. And if you don't know, I mean, hey, um, if you can sell anything with sugar, okay, if you can sell anything with sugar, your chances are you're going to make a lot of money. I mean, sugar is like the number one drug on the planet. Okay, so, I mean, if you can sell it with sugar and get it in someone's mouth, they're going to buy more of it. <laughs> Chances are. That's why I put a lot. That's why I'm so sweet in my videos. All right, so sweet. It's sugar, baby. It's sugar. So keep buying my stuff. I'm just kidding. All right, anyway, maybe there's sugar in it. I don't know. Um, but, so he goes out. He starts to sell a lemonade. He starts to sell lemonade the next day. He triples his investment selling lemonade. Okay? That's why you see lemonade stands go up all the place. That's why kids sell lemonade. Okay? That's why they sell it it works okay now what he did wrong is the next day he didn't go out and sell more lemonade when he tells me the story when he tells the story he'll say I should have gone out the next day and and double down on what worked he said I should have grabbed one of my friends said hey dude I'm gonna open you up a lemonade stand I'm gonna give you 80% I'll supply the lemonade you give me 20% boom and he would have been rolling in lemonade money Okay, but you got to 10x, you got to double down on what works. I see this countless time again. Entrepreneurs, um, you, you get an enrollment, you make a sale, and then you don't 10x on what works. You go right back to the, the struggle and the grind. Stop getting sucked into the grind. The grind is not a good thing to be in. I'm telling you, if you grind too much, you'll cut through the metal. Oh, man. I'm telling y'all, hey. All y'all grinders out there, let me tell you, I used to work with metal. All right, when I had a job, I used to work. I used to work with metal, uh, metal fabricators and, and those guys. And I'm telling you, when you grind too much, you'll mess up the metal. You got to get in polish mode too. There's a play. There's a time to grind and there's a time to polish, my friends. And you got to understand that there's a time to grind and there's a time to polish. Okay, so. Are you doing what's working for you? Have you done, have you tracked this? Have you tracked, can you go back and see what worked for me last week? Can you go back through your statements, your bank account statements, your business statements um, through 2016? And look, I'll say, oh, cool, I made, you know, I, I went back the other day and I was like, oh my God, I, I, I had a double month in, um, I think it was August, okay? You know, August, I was like, oh my God, I think I made like, $10,000 or $12,000 in the month of August. I was like, oh my God, like that's, that's a good month, okay? Now, I'll admit it. Did I actually take the time, sit down, and go, what exactly did I do through the month of August so I could double down? Most of us don't do this. We don't go back and we don't look for places where where's the month that you got more leads? Where's the month that you had the most or the day that you had the most website views? You know what? You know all the things that that account for the success or the lack of success that we have. What are the things that worked, and are you doubling down on what works? That's where you got. You got to actually take the time. You got to go say, "Oh man, I didn't know." You know, at the time of it, you're like, "Oh great, you know, I made a good amount of money that month, or I had a lot of customers that month, or I had a lot of leads that month, or or whatever the case is." But then you've got to say, "What is it?" You got to dissect it and say, "How can I double down on what works?" This is step number two, and this is I'm telling you, if you're in the category where you want to start, where you want to be one of the rich people that keeps getting richer and richer and richer, it's not about money. It's about adopting this idea. It's about adopting this success principle and this process. If you adopt this process, I guarantee you, you'll get rich. I guarantee you. I'm going to go deep. If you have not gotten your access to toponlinebootcamp.com, then um, you've got to get access to that today. I'm telling you, the price is going up. Uh, only a few days left. That little deal on there is going up, all right? So if you haven't gotten access, 
to toponlinebootcamp.com uh, and got your 30-day boot camp. Uh, remember, you got you have access to it for your entire life, but you've got to grab it, all right? You've got to grab it. You've got to grab it. If you don't have your access to our free members area uh, on our site, then go to cloud10network.com and grab your free membership, okay? So number two is double down. Number three, again, if you've gotten, if you've gotten value from this so far, all I ask you to do is comment, tag somebody, share it, click the share button, all right, and put number two in the uh, in the comment section. If you've gotten value from this at all, put number two in the comment section, click the share button, all right? Share button's right down at the bottom. All right, number three, last thing, okay? Last thing is you've got to absolutely crush what doesn't work. Number three is you've got to crush, obliviate, annihilate, whatever it is, incinerate, what doesn't work, okay? You've got to incinerate what doesn't work. Let me tell you a story. Um, you know, I was thinking, when I was thinking about putting this together, I was like, you know, I love sports. I love sports. And um, I was like, man, Michael Jordan won a championship, okay? The Bulls won, like, their first championship before their dynasty started. They won their first championship, Okay? And this is a big lesson here. I want you to really grab this lesson. So if you're here, I want you to hang on with me because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really share something that was a big, a big eye-opener for me. Okay, big eye-opener for me. Okay. Michael Jordan, they win their first championship. Then he says, you know what? He decides, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to retire. I'm going to play baseball. Okay. And, you know, it, it worked out for him because, you know, he ended up going playing baseball and that didn't work out. Then he comes back and they win like, what, 40 more championships, right? Now, that's an example to where it worked out, okay? But he even did the same thing, and I guarantee you, I don't know Michael, but I, I can I can, I can, can surely say that he'd probably do it differently if he had the chance to do it over again, okay? Now, I'm not a big advocate for, hey, you know, what would I do over? Do I regret anything? I'm not a big advocate for that, but if he were, chances are, if he was giving advice to someone else or a mentee, he may say, I, I may do, if this were you, I would probably do this a little differently, okay? So the thing here, and I had, when, I, when I told this the first time, you know, I had a lot of people saying, well, you know, what about, what, about, um, what about learning from your mistakes? What about that, you know? Um, what about learning from your mistakes? What if, what if that experience was enabled him to learn from his mistakes? I, I, I am a true advocate for going out and making, make, don't go out and just try to make mistakes, Okay? Learn from your mistakes. Your mistakes can are, are the one of the greatest opportunities you have. But th sometimes I think people get this this misconception that they have to go out and like purposely make mistakes. That's not the point. Okay. The point is is you know here, here here's the deal. I don't have to stick my hand in fire to know it's hot. Okay. I don't have to stick my hand in fire to know it's hot. Okay. I don't have to I don't have to learn the hard way. To know I need to look both ways to cross the street. Does this make sense? Okay. So you don't necessarily have to go through the thing to understand that you don't have to get hit by a car to understand that you need to cross, that you need to look both ways. Does it make sense? So, I mean, is this, I mean, like, okay, cool. I'm getting some some thumbs up, some hearts, some likes. That makes sense, right? Guys, a lot of times we, we fall in, as entrepreneurs, we fall into this fail forward thing, which is, it's great because you have to keep moving forward. It's the, it's conquering the fear of making mistakes. It's not purposely going out and, you know, saying, okay, I've got to make mistakes. I've got to, you know, I've got to make all these mistakes. I've, you know, the more mistakes you make, the more, you know, you're going to have success. Mistakes are great and mistakes are, are bad. Um, if I, if I'm one of your mentors, Angela, if you, if you, if, if you're on my team, if you're in a group with me, if you go through group coaching or you're one-on-one, -on -one, whatever it is, learn from my mistakes. I don't have to go through a lot of the stuff that my mentors went through because I learned from their mistakes. I learned that, hey, he put his hand in the fire and that was hot. I don't have to. My son doesn't have to understand this. My, my, my daughter doesn't have to, to, to know that, you know, there's certain people that you just shouldn't hang around as guys, right? Because we as parents understand that there's certain things that we go through so you don't have to go through them. Our job is just to, to, to paint that picture visually to stimulate the fact that you don't have to go through that mistake to learn from it. 
The point is we need to, to learn from the mistakes that we make, okay? But look for the mentorship and the guidance and the coaching so we don't necessarily have to learn the hard way. We can learn from someone else's mistake, okay? So crush what doesn't work. Get with people that understand, hey, this works. This doesn't work. And crush what doesn't work. Adapt and adopt new innovations, new ideas, things that come along. Be one of the first. Understand that there's a time to be a cynic. There's a time to be an optimist. Okay? If you make mistakes, that's the point. If you make the mistake. One, you got to keep moving forward all times. you got to keep putting one foot in front of the other. It's about losing the fear of making mistakes because the fear is what keeps you back. The, the fear is what stops you. The fear is what halts you. When you can lose the fear around making the mistake, okay, and then you're on the, the, the path of looking for mistakes, but remember, you don't have to get hit by a car to learn that you've got to look both ways. You don't have to get third-degree burns before you learn that you shouldn't jump in a fiery furnace. Does this make sense? So one of the biggest lessons that you can learn when it comes to crushing what doesn't work, link up with people. Get with multiple, multiple people in the same niche, okay? And I'm telling you, when, you, when I say multiple, I'm saying like maybe three to five. Don't, don't be all on everybody's email list or 400 people's email list, you know, that, that have completely different ways of thinking, Okay? Typically, when it comes to, like, why, when I get on someone's email list, it's coming from, you know, I'll, I'll tell you right now, this is, this is how I look to see if I'm going to get on most people's email. 80% of the email list that I'm on, okay, this is what I'm doing. I'm, I'm, it starts at Ray Higdon. Ray Higdon was, like, the first person. He, to me, he's, like, my ultimate mentor. When I got into his coaching program, it was it, okay? Um, but I also look for people. The, you know, if, if Ray Higdon's one at the top of this chain or whatever, um, I'm looking for who studied under him directly. Who's who's studying under him directly? Okay, so, you know, there's people like Kate McShay, um, Lisa Torres, um, Vince Reed. The, these are three people that, that I'm looking that that study with him directly. Okay, so now there's four people right there. And... What I'm doing is I can work with Kate directly. I can, you know, I can, you know, I've earned a little, you know, probably leeway with, with Lisa. I would say that, you know, Lisa and I haven't worked together, you know, one-on-one. -on -one, but um, it, it's just connecting with people in, in, in that line because they think, they're thinking on the same wavelength, right? You know, they're, they're, they're taking bits and pieces and, and you know, Kate's not going to be all over here because, you know, she's, you know, connected to Ray. I hope that makes sense. I may not explain that the best, but... Um, you know, the other 20%, you know, they may be, uh, you know, random things that I'm checking out, looking to see. Um, yeah, I know I'm on, uh, I'm Ron Gilock's list. You know, he's, he's directly to Ray. So I, I look to, to, to make sure that I'm on email lists that are kind of, you know, thinking on the same, uh, wavelength. They're not like, you know, one person may say, oh, I hate Facebook. And the other person may say, I love Facebook. I don't really want that kind of thing going on in my head because it, it's kind of like the CD player. Okay, if, if if you've got a whole bunch of songs playing and they're different songs, all there is going to be is all there is going to be noise. Okay, you don't want a bunch of noise. You want the same song playing. Okay, and and it could be a different version of the same song, but it's going to click more. Okay, so um, those are three ways, guys. Again, if you haven't gotten access to TopOnlineBootCamp.com, uh, make sure you get access to that. Okay, um, through the first of the year. Okay, through the first of the year, only doing this for this week, only through the first of the year, after the year, it's done deal. If you haven't gotten access to the 90-day master, um, that is on sale this week, all right, 70% off this week only. Once the calendar changes, the done, okay, it's done. So if you haven't gotten access to the 90-day master and you really want to learn how I tripled my income and how I'm showing everyone that's gone through it how to triple their income, okay, then you've got to get access to the 90-day master. Um, I'm doing it for this week only. This week only, grab it for 70% off, and, uh, and that's it. So if you've got questions for me, always feel free to ask. My website is down today, uh, December 20-something, 7th, or whatever it is. Um, but 
Um, it's down for maintenance today. Um, but if you have questions for me, feel free to uh, to shoot me a question or whatever you got. Hope you guys got some value out of it. If you did, uh, feel free to just press the share button. Uh, shout out to all the people that already shared. I know Valerie shared it a couple times. <laughs> so I appreciate the shares, everybody. Hope you guys got some awesome value out of today. And, um, and yeah, so.